Okay, we are back on YouTube. Uh, this is the House Healthcare Committee. It's Friday, March 12th, and it's uh, almost 3.30 p.m. Uh, so at this point, uh, we have, we're have we working on House Bill 210. Uh, that is an act that is addressing issues of health disparities and working toward health equity. That's not the official name, but it's a paraphrase. Uh, we've marked up the bill and made additions and have taken the time for every committee member to be able to read the latest uh, completely um, integrated, suggest with all the integrated suggestions that have been made over earlier, earlier today. So at this point, unless, let me just say, is there anything else that people need to bring forward in terms of a last minute suggestion? And I see a hand. Oh, I see several hands. Okay, Representative Burroughs. It's just a little, a little one. Um, I think that uh, cisgender should be defined because not everybody reading the bill understands what that means. I'm going to suggest that we not try to do that right now, but I will defer to. Uh, I don't think I want to put it in the definition section. No, sorry. <laughs> I appreciate your suggestion, but I'm going to use my judgment as to not go there right now. Okay, my other question is, um, I, I, and I don't know the answer to this question, so I'm asking. Um, it was in in lower cases one word. Um, mm -hmm. That is that the newest conventional use. Of which word are you talking about? Cisgender. It's lowercase. Okay. I think it's lowercase. Yeah. I was going to say. I, mean, I think it's. I think it's in the dictionary now. People can always yeah. just look it up. Yeah, that's, Often that's words suggest. you're not familiar with. Yeah. Uh, Brian, represent Gina, and then represent Golden. Yes. Um, I just want to like um, let you all know I sent you an email just now with the latest findings. I added in a link to Ann Donahue's testimony, oh. and I also added in a link to. Um, the UVM website, and I did both because I felt like the record does have your your um, testimony, which has a lot of sources in it. And I just think that it's important to show people there's like a rich amount, a, a rich body of evidence. So if every uh, Katie has looked it over and approved my formatting. So if everyone takes a look, this is what will go in the final record of um, our like sort of bibliography. Thank you. Thank you for that okay. work. Uh, I'm I'm just having to communicate with the clerk's office. If you bear with me for a second. Okay, uh, Representative Golden. So it's really amazing to read this piece of work now that we've done it all together and have this conversation. I want to congratulate Brian for bringing it forward. It's in really meaningful piece of work. So thank you and for everyone else too. I have two small things that I just wanna get off. Um, these are tiny. One is on page 11. I'm still hung up on that health equity definition. And I'm wondering if people would consider taking out the first sentence of that line eight on section six, because health equity is, not the, that's not what health equity is, but health equity is what comes next. So that's just an issue for me, but it doesn't change anything in the long run. I wasn't party to that discussion, so I'm not gonna weigh in at this point. Yeah, I mean, it, the issue was heard and kind of decision to move on. I think that I'm if there were any changes, yeah, okay, if there were any changes at this point, they ought to be because it was a major error found rather than- Oh, it wasn't an error, obviously. Right. Okay, I'll have to live with that. Um, the only other piece, I'd like to go back to BB, that's on page 17. And I'm hoping we could say uh, necessary, a point to carry on because every other one they're appointed by Vermont. So in this case, the commission is appointing um, the at-large members. And I'd just like that clarified. Probably 
deems necessary to appoint to carry out the functions, whatever, or appoint to carry out the functions. Somewhere the word appoint. I'll, I'll bet the editors might catch that. Well, I wouldn't mind just putting it in and then letting them put it in the right place grammatically. So I just would like to see that clear so, uh, so. possibility. I don't have that right in front of me at the moment. Um, let me. Yeah, it would be on the second, on line two on page 17, it would be, it's a little awkward, but that deem necessary to appoint to carry out the functions of this section, because that gives the commission the authority to appoint the at large. I see your point. <laughs> As it were, I do, I do though. I see it. I see what you mean. It seems like it's more of a clerical error than. A... Yeah, I just think it's a language thing. It's just we appoint yeah. all. Yeah, you know, when you go up, a member appointed, a member appointed. I, you I'm know, I'm hearing you right, right, because we're not appointing something. those. It's the committee. Yeah. Is that something that could just be corrected um, after it comes from editing if it's just adding in two words, Katie, or is that going to be a problem? I think in general, I'm fine adding two words. I feel like the sentence reads a little awkward with that addition. So I might just run it, just that paragraph by them again with that yep. addition to see if they have any suggestions. And I'm gonna suggest we leave it to the discretion of our ledge council and editors. That's fine. Right. That's we suggested. understand the issue and they can figure it out. I agree. Okay, okay great. Anything else? Representative Cordes. Mine is a, a clerk question. Um, a clerk question? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, the bill, the draft that we're working off of is um, one that you've been amending, Katie, as we go, or um, editing as, as we go, but it's still dated <clears throat> and timed this morning at 10.56 a.m. Will you be sending out the final version, which will also be a version that you send to editing. And then I would use that date and time marker on the report of the record of action. So they're going to give me back a clean 4.1. The reason why it's dated this morning is that's when I created the newest version 4.1. Um, so I need to wait until we get it back from editing before I fill out my record of action. I, I don't think the draft number will change and I don't think the time will change. Although if we're making that change to add to a point, then it might become a 4.2. Um, so let me see if they're going to accept that change. Can Would you mind just communicating with me? So I, sure. I can Perhaps the two of you communicate on that, on that Thank point. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Okay, at this point, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, have us move forward for committee discussion. And I'm going to open it up to members to make any last, not last, but well, it would be last, but any uh, comments uh, about the bill uh, before us prior to ending, prior to anticipating action taken on the bill. So with that, I open up the committee for committee discussion. Uh, Representative Peterson. Yes, I'll bite uh, Representative Lippert. Um, I'm not going to support the bill, um, but I don't want you to hate me because I don't. Um, well. The thing is, when you vote on something, um, if we weren't voting and it was all dictated, then we wouldn't have the system we, we have. So I feel like when things are voted on, people have a right to, to have a different opinion. Um, the main reason I'm not supportive of this is I think that there's, no, the number one thing is there's a, a tremendous amount of duplication going on within within the that i've seen within the healthcare field as a whole 
And I just want to look at something. I hope I can get it back up. There's so many agencies that deal with people in the state who have, I think, some of the problems the folks we're trying to help have. Vermont Free and Referral Clinic, Vermont Cares, Vermont Medical Society, among many others. Um, we also have the, the, the Department of Health. And I really think the bill we need to craft is to ask the Department of Health by a date certain to do a study of health disparities and go through every policy procedure and, and law rule recommendation throughout the entire healthcare system to find out what the disparities are and bring them to us so we can be aware of them and then go about correcting them. I don't think we need legislation. I think it's, it's there for the telling. Um, I think we could, we, we could just get it done, frankly, uh, without spending all the time we've spent trying to craft a bill um, I think if we did that, that would be at least the logical first step. Um, I look at my district and I just feel like this amount of stuff just doesn't apply to my district. Um, and so, and some of the language in the bill, you know, I've made it clear. I, I, I'm, when I hear systemic racism, it makes the hair stand up in my head. I, 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 it bothers me. It's in this bill throughout. Um, I just, I can't put my name on it. So I will vote no when it comes to the committee vote. Okay. Thanks for listening. Yeah, I'd like to say a few things as the chair of the committee. First of all, you have every right to expand. This is the time, as I said earlier, during committee discussion, every member has their full opportunity to express whatever point of view you have. This is also not a time, I'm not going to, in fact, I'm going to ask, that this is not a time to debate. This is not a time for others to rebut anything you've said, any more than uh, for you to rebut something someone else has said. Um, and I anticipate that we will have differing points of view on this, and that is, uh, that is acceptable. Some of those points of view are divergent and uh, maybe even diametrically opposed, but that is your right to hold that opinion about this bill. And so, um, I'm, and I, and I, I so I, I would just say as well that one of the things that I've worked toward, and I will continue to work toward as the chair of this committee. This is before hearing anyone else speak, but just to say, because you've made a very strong statement, that uh, it is my goal that when we can uh, disagree, that we can disagree in a respectful and civil way. And uh, and, and I, I hope this. I hope what I said was was respectful and civil, because I certainly well, mean it that way. I, I know you do, and I know that some issues are very, very sensitive for many people, but I would just suggest that this is, that we listen to each other rather than try to rebut each other and speak for ourselves mm -hmm. as to about what, what our thoughts are on this bill. And with that, I would, uh, I recognize Representative Chena. Thank you. Um I know you just did not to rebut people, but I, I don't want to rebut what Art said, but I want to respond to him as a human, like just as like as a as a colleague that um, although we may disagree on some things, I don't hate you. Um, and it makes me think of Martin Luther King's quote. Same here. Yeah, where he says Martin Luther King said hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And I think in the end, like we have to just focus on our love for each other as human beings, even when we disagree. So I just want to say that at first, it's not like my statement on the bill, but just as we're humans, we have relationships with each other and I want to acknowledge that. And you um, know, that, that means a lot. That means a lot. Cause I, I know I'm going to stick out here and it means a lot. Thank you. <laughs> um, so now I want to just um, speak what, you know, in support of the bill. Um, that um where do i begin um
I'm like having a hard time catching my like um, pulling myself together. So sorry. Take your I'm time. Gonna have, like, a, I'm gonna have like a Lori moment. <laughs> um, it's fine. As I remember, so, as I said to Lori, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, because I think when we think about the work we're doing in healthcare, it's really like people. It's like your substance, your body, your mind, your spirit. You know, it's like who you are. Healthcare is like affecting that. So it's you know, it's a it's it's very emotional when you think about what it really means for people. Um, so I, I um, so will be supporting this bill, even though it has strayed from the original bill. I mean, we, I expect that that's what's going to happen. And I feel like the committee worked really hard with stakeholders um, to adapt this bill so that it makes sense in the current dynamics that we're in. I mean, the reality is that it's not business as usual right now. Um, but I'm, I'm appreciative that during a public health, health emergency, we've decided to prioritize health equity because the public health emergency has amplified those inequities. Um, so it's the perfect time to, to say enough is enough. We're gonna do something proactive about this beyond what we've been doing. Um, I see this bill as building on the past work of the committee in the four years before this one that I was on the committee, we heard extensive testimony about health, uh, inequities in the healthcare system. So I see this being the next logical step. Um, in my own life experiences, I've had a hard time with the healthcare system as a, you know, as a recipient of healthcare. I have my own horror stories of how I was mistreated by providers. Um, and as a healthcare provider, I see it. You know, I see it constantly. I hear from my clients what they go through whether they're BIPOC or LGBTQ or people with disabilities, um, I'm in situations in the healthcare system that are that that um, are incredibly harmful to watch. You know, hurtful to see happen. I see people being oppressed pretty regularly um, by by the practices of our healthcare system, and I often feel powerless in those moments because sometimes I'm the only person in a room. Um, who seems to be noticing what's ha what's really happening to a person as their rights are taken from them and as they're humiliated and and um, oppressed. So too often, um, the voices of people who've been oppressed have been left out. But in this bill, we are building into the government a structure that says that those voices are important. With this commission, you know, and we're, we're and we're getting. I'm pleased that we're giving this commission even more power than it originally had by letting them actually budget the money. You know, letting them figure out how they're going to budget the money and hold their meetings, and letting them add people if they see it as necessary, and figure. You know, letting them figure that out. That's a huge shift in, in policy, I think, from the way that I've seen things happen. And um, and and there's something really significant about that about giving people who have been uh, systemically disempowered, uh, a chance to be systemically empowered. Um, so I really appreciate that. And, you know, through this bill, we are transforming the existing systems of government. Um, I don't, I personally don't see it as um, extra. I see it as we've done all this work and it wasn't lining up right. And we were hearing that from people. So people in the BIPOC community said, let's look at this issue and let's come forward with an idea. And then this committee took testimony. We refined that idea. And I believe we've come forward with a solution that it's like the next logical step and what the state needs to do to address health disparities and to promote health equity. So thanks to everyone for hearing me out. Um, thank you for keeping an open mind and, um, and we will move on from this and continue our work together and on many other important things, but I appreciate the time we've given this issue. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Representative Chena. Uh, Representative Black, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what order people, if other, it, or it matters too much at this point, but Representative Black and then Representative Donahue and Representative Cordes. I was gonna say the exact same thing that Brian, uh, that Representative Chena said, but he beat me to it. No. No, I just wanted to say that um, I'll be I'll be supporting this. Um, I did want to I did just want to make sure that Representative China was was comfortable with everything that we've done with it. I think he clearly 
said that he is because to me it's important that that he is comfortable with it. Um, I don't think um, I'm supporting this because this lays a framework and it lays down the groundwork of the direction that we need to move. I don't believe that this is a complete panacea. There is so much work that needs to be done, but you know, I think that this puts in place, it acknowledges that we have work to do and it puts in place a structure where we can begin moving down that road. And um, I'll obviously be supporting it for that reason. So, and I think, I really wanna thank Representative China for all the work that he's, that he's done on this. Thank you. Representative Donahue? Representative Cordes Sector. Like Brian, maybe I'm a little still figuring out articulation, but um, but when I think about when I first brought um, forward the eugenics apology resolution ten years ago, and um, the Human Services Committee said, "Oh well, this is you know." We'll spend a morning on this and we'll pass it because this is pretty clear cut. And what happened is um, different groups who had been affected came in and said, well, we don't like this wording because we were actually more affected than what this reflects. And another group come in and say, well, you left us out. Um, well, you weren't as damaged long-term as our group. And, um, and that's why we couldn't put more time into trying to solve that problem. But um, so how I came to this issue and why this bill is important to me, I don't wanna say it in a way that, that makes it sound that way. I would have supported the bill if it was only focused on the group that we are most conscious of right now in the history and the depth of that inequity and the impacts of COVID. Um, but I'm also very grateful that there was recognition and incorporation of the health disparities that we know exist with other groups, including the one I belong to. Um, and when I think back, I mean, I, I certainly believed myself, have always believed myself to be you know, open-minded to not carry a lot of biases around. But when I first experienced my illness, I learned a lot about that because I could both go through the experience, uh, not just of the shame of all of the implications of having a psychiatric illness, um, but also discovering something I would, it would never have occurred to me that having always paid into and maintaining my insurance, all of a sudden I would have an illness that was deemed not something that insurance would cover. And it also made me so acutely aware that when I was in law school, I really wanted to be involved in clinical legal uh, work. Um, and Georgetown had three clinics. It had a clinic, it had a uh, juvenile law clinic, it had a criminal law clinic, and it had a mental health law clinic. And I know acutely how much I had no interest in the mental health law project. <laughs> Yuck, <laughs> dealing with that kind of stuff and those people, no, <laughs> not interested. Um, so I feel like I have a, I don't know if you call it a kinship, an awareness uh, of what it feels like to be part of a, a group. Um, but I also know how different it is um, because some of our groups that are discriminated against or oppressed can hide it. Um, we don't have to wear it on our skin. The causes and history are very different. My group also is probably the only group that I know of where 
you know, in the past four years, and I don't want to make it political, but in the past four years, we had somebody who made a lot of comments that were attacked as that was really horrible language. It was discriminatory. It was biased language. You know, the only time that that wasn't said is when that person used the term psycho. It wasn't the big press reaction saying, oh, how horrible. Uh, you know, we have in our state house yesterday, I was listening to video tape. I saw pro coverage on a mental health issue that is in a in another committee right now. And it related to, you know, should we ban guns in hospitals? And there was a comment about, well, given the amount of people with mental illness who come into our hospitals, we, we really need to move on that. So, When I think about the structure this bill has taken, I think that's one of the most important positive things we can be doing because it goes back to the disability slogan, nothing about us without us, to try to fix anything, to try to address inequity, inequities or even to try to build or rebuild systems right. We can't do it for other people. We have to hear and be guided by the people who are experiencing what they are experiencing, even whether we see it objectively or not. There are plenty of people who will say, no, there's no, there's no uh, stigma to mental illness anymore. We're past that. People actually tell me that. Um, when I had to change my psychologist was, re was retiring and and, uh, and I actually told the new person I was seeing, I was, it was a little difficult for me because my car was parked in a place where, you know, I was in a parking lot with other cars. I had my state house plates in front of this therapist's office. Um, and this person acted, this therapist said to me, Shit, this, this is no stigma anymore. That, that, would, that shouldn't be a problem. I was like, you gotta be kidding. Um, and so I, I really relate and I see that. And I know there are people who believe, you know, we don't, we don't have this as a problem. Um, and I can connect deeply to recognizing how we can have really significant problems that we don't experience ourselves or don't recognize because we're not experiencing it and feeling it. And, and it makes sense and it's understandable and it's, um, and it's challenging. But um, I, I think I would have supported the bill regardless, but I would have been, I was a little leery initially in terms of creating this office from the get go. I, I think that um, to me, it's just an incredibly good and powerful thing, the way it's structured, that it is the people who are affected um, by the things that lead to disparities in the outcomes in health. Um, but that's where it's going to be led. That's how it's going to be built and created. Um, it is, it's such a positive way to be going. And I'm really um, proud to have been part of the process and uh, to work with all of you, meaning every single one, <laughs> whether we see it a lot differently or a little differently, um, but I'm uh, I'm really proud to be supporting this bill. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative Cordes. I feel like there needs to be a moment of silence uh, after that. I. I'm supporting the, this bill. And in my mind and in my heart, I 
see it as a model of how um, I would like other bills to be created and then edited and added to and shaped because Brian and every voice that worked with Brian before this even came to our committee uh, told their stories and were clear about their experiences. Um, and that has not happened um, that has happened far too little in our representative democracy. And so that's, that's why I think this is um, such a profound model for how to create policy that, that um, impacts people, um, especially if we do have the intent of not leaving people out. And it's, the data is clear and the, the stories um, and the oral histories of so many people that we've heard from um, tell us that they have been left out. And so I'm just, I'm so incredibly grateful um, to Brian, to everyone on this committee who has spoken, whether we agree or not. I think the process has been very powerful and I am grateful to have been a part of it and to be a witness to um, every story that we heard. Um, and I honor everyone's strength um, and vulnerability. Thank you. Representative Burroughs. Thank you. Um, I am a person who had to move across the country to uh, be able to um, stay in group health uh, on a group health care plan. Um, I moved from Texas to New York City in order to be able to, after having been let go from our my job a week before uh, having a baby. Um, I, I think about the breadth of the testimony that we've heard and the variety of voices and the similarities of the messages and, um, and the, the very simple requests of being heard, which we did. I think we really heard all of the people who um, testified or gave testimony. And the simple request was to be lifted up. And I think that we have done this gently and thoughtfully. And uh, as others have said, I probably would have supported it anyway, but to be able to be a part of gently lifting this tender group of people is really a, a uh, it's a humbling moment to me. Uh, not just as a kind of tangential member of one of those groups, but uh, but it it adds to my own human uh, humanity, and I thank you for the opportunity to to be part of this. It makes me really thrilled to be a legislator, and uh, um, yes, thank you. It's good. It's really good. Good. Anyone else who wishes to speak, be part of this committee discussion? Representative Houghton? I hesitate to speak after everyone else because I have nothing profoundly to say like everyone else other than um, I want to thank Representative China. I know um, we did not see a, a fraction of the work that he obviously put into this um, bill. So thank you very much. Um, 
I would just say for me, I was in full support of this bill from the very beginning and stayed throughout because to me, it's fundamentally what we should be doing in government. And that is systematically changing the processes and policies that are in place in order to help protect and provide safety to our Vermonters. Um, I think this is a really, someone else said, um, good way of starting that in regards to health equity. Thank you. Representative Goldman. I agree with Lori. I can't be anywhere near as eloquent as all of you have been. But what I really wish is that we were in the same room and that we could hug each other after this amazing piece of work. Um, I so appreciate what you said, Representative Cheetah, about we don't hate each other. We work together um, to do what we can to improve lives in the path that we have in front of us. There are so many different ways to do it, but this path is here right now. I feel very honored to have heard from people that otherwise I would never have heard from except for being in this room with you all. And that had a lot of power for me. Um, so I wanna thank that, to have that opportunity. And I just want to end with, I can't wait to see what we do next. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? Well, No, there's no there's no requirement to speak, but Woody, if you wish, your the floor is yours. Well, I've certainly said enough about the bill, and I've added my two cents along, so I might as well continue with my comments. Um, I guess. <clears throat> feel that if there are inequities within our health care system. You, you need to move up you, to, to your mic. <laughs> I feel that if there are inequities in our health care system, then our, our current agencies um, should be enforcing um, fair and equal treatment um, throughout the health care system. I think that there are departments within the in the Department of, of Health um, that should be putting more effort onto this stuff um, rather than having us um, legislating from the top down. Um, Mari sent a uh, note some time ago, I think it was from Brattleboro. Uh, there's a hospital, this is the Brattleboro Hospital in which they have a council that is um, um, working on LGBTQ uh, issues, and and my and my local uh, hospital also is working on this as well. It's 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 grassroots efforts, which is probably the best that there could possibly be, rather than having um, having us legislate this from the top down. Although I do recognize that um, quite often we do have to legislate things to make, to make changes in our world. You know, I have all these communities that we've talked about in this bill. Um, I've known many of them. I've served with many of them when I was in the military and I knew I knew, or I had an inkling, you know, of, of who they were, okay? It didn't make any difference to me because I tried to treat them like I would want to be treated. And in the end, everything worked out 
for them with my dealing with them in the military. I have a friend um, that comes up from Washington, D.C. to visit me uh, at our local camp. And um, um, he has a similar background, and I actually worked with him you know, in the Department of uh, Defense. And he's African-American. And I actually worry about him when he drives up to, to see me. And at my local camp, there's a back road. It's a dirt road. And he, he drove up it. And he asked, you know, does anyone know Woody Page? Do you know where, where uh, his camp is? And this is my African-American friend uh, who's driving a black sedan on a, on a back country road to see me and to spend some time with me and, and to go fishing. So I worry about him when he comes up to visit. And then I worry about him when he goes home, that he's not, that he's not stopped or that he's not hurt. You know, throughout my life, I've tried to be fair and equal. And uh, this bill has me in knots. Um, So I'll just leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let me, uh, I think everyone else has spoken. Uh, let me say a few words. This is a bill that I've been wanting to work toward for many years. And it always felt like other, other things took precedence. We had to deal with other pressing issues. And, and I think that's a measure of what happens too often. I mean, I, I, I take some satisfaction in having to highlight issues of health disparities over past several biennia, biennium. But it's a measure of the way that Oppression sits on these issues that it doesn't often rise to the top of our agenda. And we have put it at the top of our agenda. When I came to this session, I said health disparities are one, are one of the top issues that I, as the chair, want us to address. But it's with great gratitude, and it's with great gratitude that represented China and folks from the Racial Justice Alliance and others actually crafted a bill that became the vehicle for the work that we're doing here, that we've been doing. So there's deep gratitude on my part. Thank you. Um, it's, 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 it's really important what we're doing from my point of view. The, the end product is not clear, but the process itself is important. And others have said it. I think to, to, have, to invite voices to be heard that aren't always heard, to tell stories that aren't always told or heard. And I too, someone has said, there were stories that I would not have heard if I hadn't been in this particular committee at this particular time. I include myself there. I've heard many stories, but there were stories I have not heard before. And I've, I think on another occasion at least, made clear how challenging it was for me to not become the witness when we were hearing from the LGBTQ committee, community. Uh, that I, I have I've experienced health disparities in my own life and in the lives of my friends and those close to me. Uh, and they're heartbreaking. They're truly just heartbreaking. And so I appreciate each of us being able to listen to different stories and add to what we know needs to be different. 
I, I don't know if you can hear it. The wind is howling right outside my house right now. I, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I'm grateful that we have this opportunity. And I'm grateful actually in many ways that uh, I'm not grateful that COVID has been upon us. But if there's been any positive side to this, it's that the broader world can no longer look at health and not recognize the brutal disparities that are right in front of us, that were right in front of us. And COVID has revealed them in ways that we may not have had the courage to attend to in the same way. But that is where we are. And it has forced us to look in new ways. So uh, this will not, uh, <laughs> I'm hearing echoes of a speech I gave many years ago, uh, that th this will not end the disparities. This bill itself will not end the disparities, but it sets us in, a, it sets in motion, hopefully, uh, a structure and a set of voices to be able to speak to and guide us further in the ending of health disparities. That's my hope. Uh, it will require further attention. It will require further resources. And I say that without apology, that further resources will be required. And I value, I value the input just at a personal level. I value the input of each of you uh, in this process. Uh, and, and I look forward to, <laughs> it's, 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 the word that comes to my mind, and this is not appropriate perhaps at this point, but there's a, there's a surreal quality that we are able to work together in the way that we have within the limitations that we're working within. But I think we have, I think we've reached beyond them in, in, a, in a very significant way. And so for that, I'm, uh, for that, I'm also grateful to each of you that here we are on Zoom and uh, squares on the screen. But uh, I'm pleased to support this bill and I'm, uh, I'm ready for us to bring it forward uh, for a vote. And so if there's, let me ask if there's any other, is there any co other comment that needs to be made? And with that, I would entertain a motion. Uh, with regard to House Bill 210. <laughs> Is there anyone who would like to make a motion? I think you should have the honor of doing that. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Ann. Oh, I said, Brian, I think you should have the honor of doing that. Yes. I welcome you to make a motion, Brian. Okay, I'll do it. Um, I would like to make a motion that the uh, um that i don't remember the version number though is it what is this version number that i'm making a motion on mark 4.2 4.2 i would like to make a motion that um the house health care committee um pass version four draft 4.2 of h210 um an act relating to healthcare disparities, uh, addressing healthcare disparities and promoting health equity or something like that. Very good, we have a motion before us. And uh, is there a second? I will second. Thank you, we have a second. I'm gonna ask the clerk to call the roll. Representative Black. Yes. Representative Burroughs. Yes. Representative China. Yes. Representative Goldman. Yes. Representative Long. Representative Page. Could you say that again, Representative Page? I couldn't hear you. 
Yes. Representative Peterson. No. Representative Houghton. Yes. Representative Donahue. Yes. Representative Lippert. Yes. The motion passes on a vote of nine, one, one. Okay. Well, thank you all. This has wow. been this has been a uh, oh this has been a an important process, and uh, I want to thank you all for your participation in this. Uh, and here it is, four twenty on March twelfth. Uh, I think we have. <laughs> We have, a, we have a lot to be pleased with that we've accomplished this within the crossover timeline. <laughs> Who knew? Uh, so Representative Cordes, I see your hand. Another clerk question. Um, <laughs> shall we discuss the reporter of the bill or is that oh. a conversation to have? So I, I'm, I'm going to suggest myself as the reporter of the bill. And I will then think with others as to how to present the bill. But I think, yes, I'm going to make that decision and suggest that as the chair of the committee, I report the bill, be the reporter of the bill with full acknowledgement that there are many other players and contributors and others too, who may be part of that as well. But I think, I think I think that's the appropriate decision at this point. Thank you, Chair. Um, can I uh, share with you the fact that I just got a text uh, from the Speaker of the House saying congratulations. <laughs> I think the Speaker of the House has been attending to our work. <laughs> right, somebody's been on YouTube. For, for, for numbers of reasons. <laughs> okay, uh, Brian. Representative China. Yes, uh, I just want to say that I actually think um, this, the way that this session has panned out, you know, it's been hard to get worked on. And we, we were able to, you know, pass this through with a good amount of testimony and, and a lot of work. Um, and uh, I appreciate that. And I actually do think it makes sense that our chair take the lead because this does feel like it's like, it was like a big committee thing and so having our chair like a committee project so having our chair be the person who can, uh, as the main presenter i think that does make sense thank you not that not that it mattered if i felt that way but i just want to let you know i actually oh, i appreciate it i appreciate it yeah. and and i I've, yeah. I've so let me also say so here we are crossover it's 422 uh you know, I want to just reflect for a moment on all the work that we've done before crossover. I think we have, we have as a committee worked really hard and accomplished significant, significant work that we can proudly bring to our colleagues. I think our work this morning, uh, I think our work this morning was uh, important in ways that is, it, 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 it's, it's a companion piece to what we just did. It's, it's the, the, uh, and yet it stands alone as something which is going to uh, make, hopefully, if enacted and when enacted, uh, impact specifically people's lives. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm recalling, I think it was Representative Black, I think, Alyssa, you said, uh, there's so many, I came here and there's so many gaps. There are so many gaps and I came here to fill gaps, but I, I don't, I think I'm closely paraphrasing something you said or, uh, and holes in the boat. What's that? Yeah, holes, holes in the boat. Holes in a boat. Yeah, and sometimes we get to fill a hole or close up a hole, and and there's a lot more to do. Uh, there's a lot more to do, but uh, but that piece of work was generated by our openness to hearing someone bring us bring us the idea and say, you know, 
I think you could do something here. And, and we opened our committee up to that possibility. And I think we moved something forward that I think we can be very proud of. Um, and I think, you know, we passed, we passed a number of other bills and we've, and we're in the midst of some other very difficult and challenging deliberations as well. Uh, we'll come back next week and we're going to need to deliberate about uh, the bill coming from the Senate, the COVID response bill uh, that has to do with more telehealth and extending emergency deadlines. And we're, we're still going to need to wrestle with a recommendation around secure residential and the implications involved there. So we've got lots of work ahead of us. Um, but I just want to say, um, the, 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 this is a marker point. The crossover date is a marker of uh, the opportunity to look and see where we've been and where we're going. Uh, so I'm going to stop there. And uh, I don't know if there, Colleen, um, is, it, is there anything further? In, well, first, OK, let me stop for a minute first. Katie McLean, please come on video, <laughs> if you would be so kind. Uh, I want to acknowledge and thank you for your critical work in bringing this bill forward, both prior to our deliberations when working with Representative China and others, uh, and under some pressure because I was eager to have it be brought forward, uh, and that created more pressure, and also in the course of this. So thank you, Katie. Uh, very, very your important your work was very significant important for us to achieve this goal so i, I really do want to acknowledge that and um, so we we have more work to do nolan's going to help us navigate the shoals of finances and financial presentations further so thank you nolan and we'll we'll keep working i, I'll, I need to do some follow-up with you there um and uh and Colleen, clearly, uh, we wouldn't be <laughs> we wouldn't be able to function if you weren't uh, helping us every day uh, that we do this work. But um, I think with that, I think we should. Uh, is there anything? Oh, I wanted to ask Colleen. Is there anything that I'm that in terms of what we need to do to bring today to a close? And pre oh, I know what Colleen's going to say. We didn't do the agenda for next week. <laughs> Yeah, we, we need to. Um, some of us need to stay on with Colleen while everybody else gets to go home. Okay. Uh, well, we know what some of it is, but um, but so we'll do that, Brian. Um, yeah, I I just wanted to publicly thank Katie um, because you you worked very hard um, under pressure and quickly and while juggling other responsibilities, like many other working people are right now. Um, and I just want to honor that. Um, and express appreciation. And I want to thank Nolan too, because you turned things around quickly when you had to um, in terms of the finances. And I think it, would, it wouldn't be right if I didn't just thank the racial justice, the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance and Absolutely. all of the community members who've contributed um, that this bill is, um, you know, it's, it represents the, the thoughts and the vision of, of, of hundreds of people, if you think about all the different voices along the way. So I just also need to say that. So thank you. I, I very much appreciate you acknowledging the incredibly important role of the Racial Justice Alliance in bringing this forward to the legislature and to our committee. Absolutely. Okay, so I think that's, that's it for now. Uh, so maybe uh, Ann and Lori can stay on the screen with us and we'll meet with Colleen and do a little bit of agenda planning and everyone else, uh, if you can get outside still, I think that the weather is changing, but it's still probably nicer outside than it has been.